This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Corelight. I'm sitting down right now with Alan Saldick, who is Chief Marketing Officer at the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Uh, I got a lot of uh, great questions here from our tech team, so you ready to get started? I'm ready. All right. So first question, can you tell us about the founding of Corelight? Who are the founders, how do they meet, and why did they decide on this idea? Yeah, uh, Corelight is actually a pretty unusual uh, tech company in that yeah. it's based on open source software that's 22 years old wow. uh, called okay. Bro. And uh, Bro was written by one of Corelight's founders, our chief scientist. Uh, his name is Vern Paxson, and he has been a professor at UC Berkeley for over 20 years. Uh, when he was a researcher at LBL, Lawrence Berkeley Lab, he developed Bro as a tool for his own research on the growth of the Internet. This okay. is back in the mid-'90s. Uh, and it was he needed to understand what was comprising this incredible growth of traffic on the Internet. And he wrote a tool, which he called Bro, for, which was kind of an allusion to Big Brother, oh, uh, because okay. you could see everything on the network. Uh, and Bro uh, was very powerful, and it was quickly adopted at LBL by the cybersecurity team there to help them understand what kind of attacks they were facing. Mm -hmm. And Lawrence Berkeley Lab is one of the big national labs in the United States, along with Los Alamos and Sandia, Oak Ridge, mm -hmm. and all these big national labs. So Bro then proliferated across the national lab network. It started being adopted by other big research universities like Ohio State. Mm -hmm. um, and then was adopted also over the years by some... Uh, some big companies, but most companies didn't adopt it mm -hmm. because it wasn't really a problem. Your, your average company back in the 90s and the early 2000s wasn't facing threats from uh, nation states. Yeah. You know, just the kind of threats they were facing were, were more tractable. And also, uh, back in that time period, if you just think back, that was before smartphones, before mm -hmm. cloud, before SaaS, yep. before mobile app. I mean, just it was a different environment. Um, over the last few years, though, uh, as everybody knows, the threats are getting more intense, the attackers are getting more sophisticated, the consequences can be literally existential for companies that have massive breaches. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, the, you know, as everyone has been talking about incessantly, the threat landscape has become more severe. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Bro has kind of existed for years and years, and has the, I guess the, the way I'd say is the threats have grown into the capability of the software. Yes. So, as I said, it's open source, and uh, Corelight was founded about three years ago. It was originally called Broala. Okay, uh, I like that. And the guys who founded it were Vern Paxson, the, the chief scientist now, um, Seth Hall, who has been kind of the chief evangelist for the Bro open source project okay. for at least 10 years, I think. He's in Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio, and he was we used to work at Ohio State. And then uh, Robin Summer, who was a researcher in Berkeley at the uh, Insti International Inst International Computer Science Institute. So the three of them thought, hey, we can help companies adopt Bro. It's a very complicated software. Mm -hmm. And they started the company to provide pro servi professional services. And that's how it got started. And then about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago, they decided really it would be a better business and what companies really needed is a product, not just professional services. And so they developed the product, which is now called the Corelight Sensor, which is an appliance. And that's what we've been selling for about a year now. Wonderful. Yeah, okay. It's a long story, but no, yeah. no, it was great. I love that. Thank you. And uh, now, <coughs> what would be the elevator pitch for Corelight? Yeah. So Corelight, really, our mission is to make the world's networks safer. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. And, and the way that we do that is by helping security operations teams, incident responders, threat hunters, mm -hmm. the people who are really trying to do the daily work of battling uh, threats from wherever they come from. Uh, helping them by giving them better visibility uh, uh, into their network traffic. And the reason that's important is if you think about any kind of attack, really, just about the overwhelming majority of attacks, in order to get from the attacker into your company, has to go over a network at some point. Right. Um, there might be a, a couple of uh, outlier exceptions, but in general, attacks have to come over a network. So the network really is kind of ground truth. There's mm -hmm. really no way to fake out a network. True, yeah. Uh, 
And so if you have good visibility into all of the data on your network, uh, and you can provide that data in a way that an incident responder can understand the context of the attack mm -hmm. and understand what's happening in real time and historically, uh, then they can very quickly uh, understand the nature of the attack, understand how far an attack has penetrated, mm -hmm. They can go back in time and see. Well, when you know, maybe they've just noticed something odd, yeah. and they want to go back in time and say, when when is the first time this file traversed any part of our network? Uh, things like that. And so that's what Bro provides. And um, the the benefit, the, at the end of the day, the benefit is really lowering business risk by making uh, incident responders more effective and letting mm -hmm. them do their job much much more quickly. Um, and we have customers who've said it is you know, 20 times faster wow. to solve incidents uh, by using Bro as compared to the tools they've been using for many, many, many years. So wow. it's a big impact. That's incredible, okay. Yeah. Uh, and now, I know you mentioned that you, know, you guys started about 15 years ago. What stage <coughs> today would you say the company is currently in? Well, just let me clarify. The, yeah. So the, the open source software has been around for 22 years. The, okay, the company's it. only been around uh, really for three years, but only ah. was funded this year. Oh, so okay. it, it was kind of operating like as a five-person professional services team until mm -hmm. March of 2017, which is you know just about nine months ago. Yeah, wow. Uh, when we raised our Series A, so that was that's really when the founders decided, okay, we have we think we have something here. We have a product. Product market fit is good. People are buying it, mm -hmm. and uh, they raised money uh, from Excel Partners primarily. And then ever since then, we've been hiring like crazy and, and kind of off and running. Nice. So it is a very unusual. You know, most companies uh, in the valley here, usually a couple of engineers invent something. It may or may not even be clear if anyone is ever going to buy it, mm -hmm. and they raise a bunch of money, and then they try to make it work, and then they go to market. This is really the opposite. This is software that's been battle-hardened for 20 True, years yeah. uh, in the open source community, and only in the last year is there a physical appliance product, and it's already being used. Very, the software has been used by thousands of organizations for many years. So now it's, uh, you know, what CoreLight is doing is selling an enterprise class um, version of Bro that's easier <laughs> to implement. Wonderful. And you've already developed that trust, yeah. too, since yeah, you've been yeah. around for exactly. so long. That's exactly. great. Got it. Okay. And now, who uses <clears throat> CoreLight mainly? You know, what does your customer, your customer base look like? Yeah, so our customers, uh, in terms of the, the companies buying it, are primarily large enterprises. Okay. Uh, we already, you know, in the first year have sold, uh, we have eight Fortune 50 customers. Nice. Uh, and, you know, as usual, difficult to get them to agree to let us name them of publicly, course, of course. especially in the world of security. But, but you know, they're all household names. Nice. Um, the buyers, actually, are usually the security operations team in a company. So okay. it could be, you know, the people who benefit directly are the, the people doing the work, the incident responders and the threat hunters. Okay. But usually it's, you know, the, the uh, buying center is the CISO, the chief information security officer, or the security operations team, network security team, that kind of thing. Okay, got it. Yeah. And now, can you talk about the evolution of uh, Bro and how CoreLight is different from uh, open source Bro? Yeah, so open, you know, like like any open source project, there are you know thousands and thousands of them. Linux is probably the best known one. Okay, yeah. Hadoop is another one. There, there are many uh, many of them out there. Um, when it comes to enterprises, what usually happens is the enterprise will somebody in the company will is really up on the technology. Will mm -hmm. download the open source software. It's free. They can modify it. They can yep. incorporate it into other products. They can do anything they want with it. And they'll try it, and you know maybe the company will adopt it. Maybe they'll say, hey, this is a great tool to store data more effectively or mm -hmm. for security or whatever. But at some point when uh, it becomes part of their mission-critical infrastructure, they start to think about things like, well, how are we going to integrate this with our existing infrastructure? Okay. Who's going to, if we have a problem, if we're really relying on this and something goes haywire, you know, with open source software, there, you, there's nobody to call. You can't get help. You, Very you can true. put your question on a message board and hope that somebody sees no, it. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, you know, we're that's we're following that same path. We're building an enterprise class product. Uh, you know, at first glance, the real benefits are it's much higher performance than you can kind of get with Bro on your own. Okay. It's because we configure it as an appliance. You don't have to worry about hardware integration. You don't have nice. to worry about the NIC card. You don't have to worry about tuning it or in integrating it with other systems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the nice things about CoreLight and about Bro in general, uh, if you talk to incident responders, th their main problem is they are inundated with alerts. And, yeah. uh, you know, we, we always visualize you know, burglar alarms going off every 10 seconds. And after a while... It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. And you can't figure out, you know, is there really a burglar or is it just the alarm going off yeah. again? And um, so, you know, Bro helps you see through that and figure out what's going on much more easily. But then you, what Bro does is it sends the data 
to the existing analytics stack mm -hmm. that the company already uses. So we're not trying to nice. sell a company, you know, another we, uh, in the in the industry we call it pane of glass. We're mm -hmm. not trying to sell you another thing to look at, which will t give you more alerts and you know, in, in more fancy ways. This is, we just provide raw data, and then you use, use the tool you're already using. In many cases, nice. it's something like Splunk, mm -hmm. or ArcSight, or QRadar. There's a lot of products that are called SIMS, uh, Security Incident Event Managers. And those tools are, you know, every company has their favorite, and so the nice thing is we're not telling them to use a different one. Mm -hmm. We just give them better data for their existing tools, and it makes their life easier. Nice, and then be yeah. able to integrate that into yeah, their current. Exactly. That's so wonderful. we we make that that integration much easier. If you t if you use Bro Open Source, you have to figure all that out on your own. Okay. And then usually the same people who are supposed to be doing incident response, if they're using Open Source Bro, it's usually the same humans who are spending a good part of their day messing around with Bro, True. trying to integrate it, trying to make keep it working, tune mm -hmm. it, when they really their time be better spent looking for attackers. Makes sense. So. Okay. Uh, and now, can you talk about Correlate's progress so far? Any notable milestones in the industry? Yeah, so as I said, the product really just launched a year ago, the, yep. the hardware product, the Correlate sensor. And uh, when it launched, I mean, the founders plus a couple of other people, including uh, Vince, who you're going to hear from later, mm -hmm. You know, did all did everything themselves. They they we, Corelight had no salespeople, no marketing, no product managers, no um, just just the four or five of them really. Wow. Um, and so you know, for, and that was just you know less than a year ago. Today we have thirty people. We've built the beginnings of our sales force. We have four or five sales teams around the country. And you know, by this time next year, we would expect to be three times the size, roughly. Um, so, you know, we're doing all the things, and, you know, a lot of us have done this many times before, and uh, there's certain things you just kind of have to build in your infrastructure of your company, sales, go-to-market team, uh, support, customer yep. success, you know, all, all those things. So that's, that's really what we're doing now. Nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now I know you just uh, briefly mentioned it, but uh, what are the company's plans for 2018? Growth, primarily. Uh, you know, we feel like we have proven a lot of things. You know, in any new company, there's a lot of risks when you get started. There's product risk, technology risk, adoption risk, financing risk, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Corelight has already gotten through, you know, four or five of the big hurdles. Yep. I mean, we have a product now that we have a lot of proof that people are buying in, in surprisingly large quantities. Uh, and this is for, you know, we're a, we're a brand new company mm -hmm. with a, albeit, you know, well-known piece of software in, in some circles. A lot mm -hmm. of people have never heard of Bro. Mm -hmm. So we, we have, it's very common for us to go into a you know, large company with very knowledgeable security teams, and for whatever reason, they've just never heard of Bro. They've huh. heard of lots of other security things, but they've just never come across it. And so we're getting better at uh, explaining it to them, mm -hmm. I think, I hope. Uh, we do very well if people are already using Open Source Bro because they yep. know what it's for, they and understand perfect, it. Yeah. And then we're just saying, well, we make it easier and faster and you know, all those things. But when you reach someone who's never heard of it, they have a lot of misconceptions. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have to explain that, which is normal for any technology company. And I think over the next year, we're really going to uh, figure out how to do that in a more scalable way through partners you know, okay. resellers, systems integrators, uh, those kind of things. Nice. All yeah. right. And uh, lastly, are there any uh, last things that you'd like to highlight about the company? Well, I think, you know, as everyone knows, cybersecurity is a hot market. Um, yep. There's, I think I heard the other day, there's 1,600 companies providing products to the enterprise market in wow. cybersecurity. So it's very noisy. Uh, and I think the thing that we're uh, offering is a, is a way, by giving you better data, um, you know, our, our customers are struggling, as we said before. You know, they're just buried in information, a lot of which is a lot of noise and not much signal. Yeah. And so what we're really, what we're really trying to do is make their lives easier. And as I mentioned, we're not trying to sell them another analytic. There's just a lot of companies that are going to try to sell you a, you know, a kind of a, whether it's with artificial intelligence or mm -hmm. machine learning mm -hmm. or, you know, behavioral analytics or, you know, whatever. And the problem with all those kind of systems is, the customer doesn't really have access to the, you know, how, how do you know that's an alert? And the, and the oh, product okay. is saying, well, this is bad, this is good. Bro has a very different philosophy. It's really all about visibility, and we're not, the technology is not making a judgment about whether traffic is good or bad. It's mm -hmm. just giving you the tools to make the decision yourself. So it's a little oh, bit like, okay. you know, we're not going to give you the cliff notes about the book. You, here's the actual book. You can read it yourself, and we make it easy to understand uh, nice. what's happening. And so that's, I think, for a lot of our customers, it's a refreshing mm -hmm. um, thing to try because they're not, we're not trying to convince them to change their behavior or to give them these kind of magical um, 
answers that right. aren't always correct. Uh, we're just giving the raw data. Nice. Well, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for sitting down and speaking with me today. I really appreciate okay, it. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Right. Appreciate it. And that's all the time that we have for today. So be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.